so as i said you know uh, the second I, when i sold the company to 10 micro uh, what we were doing is we were uh, we were finding out what are the weaknesses in our customers applications you know in their websites or mobile apps and reporting it to them uh, and when i used to meet a lot of my cio and chief security officer friends uh, they would come and tell me that uh, you know it's great you are reporting all these things to us but it takes us time for us to fix it and now that you have reported we knew we now know that hackers can hack us any time so why don't you come up with a solution where uh, you not only report these weaknesses but till the time we fix it you help us uh, uh, keep, keep protect uh, get uh, help us get protected through them so i think we i always had this at my mind and uh, and i said and once i did it i don't think i wasted a single day the, on the next day of my acquisition after the money came in the bank the second day itself we were all this we said that this is what it is and we are going to build this up dear listeners this is your host siddharth alwalia founder of 100x entrepreneur podcast before we begin i would like to thank our sponsors prime venture partners prime is the first institutional investor in category creating tech startups like Mygate, Neo, Dozy, Planet Spark. Prime is now investing out of his fourth fund, which is more than hundred million dollars. And today we have with us Shri Pati Acharya, managing partner, Prime. Shri Pati, when entrepreneurs are looking for money in their company, how do they do they evaluate the quality of the money? While money itself is a commodity, the people behind it are not. Your investor. is also your board member for the life of the company so the key thing to figure out as a founder is do you see your investor as a strategic partner with whom you can have critical conversations founder issues hiring and firing decisions acquisitions partnerships exit of the company and everything else and the way to figure that out is to not only have meaningful conversations with the partner but also deep reference checks with the portfolio ceos of that investor thank you shripati dear listeners let's dive directly into the podcast today i have with me ashish tandon co-founder and ceo of indusface indusface is one of the leading cloud security and application security platforms from india is recognized globally by gartner as one of the top security vendors and ashish has been a third time entrepreneur he sold his first venture to sifi and since then you know he has been building ventures one after the other he sold his second venture to trend micro and today we will dive down into his story of how a cricketer became an entrepreneur ashish welcome to the podcast thanks thank you thank you so much for having me uh, i am really looking forward to our conversation today ashish would love to know from you your background before you became an entrepreneur before all of that uh, about your parents how you grew up and your interest in cricket yeah so it's been a long journey but uh, yeah my pa- i'm i'm as i as you rightly mentioned i'm a first generation entrepreneur so clearly my parents uh, weren't entrepreneurs or did not have uh, any entrepreneurial background so we uh, i grew up in baroda i did my schooling engineering from baroda being a punjabi i was a fast bowler and i i was reasonably quick and 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 very very keen uh, cricketer so i played under 19 i i played for the red zone some of the some of the budding indian test players now like amol mazumdar and rishikesh kanetkar etc you know i played with them uh, and then uh, i was fortunate enough to get picked up uh, for my baroda rajji trophy team as well and i always wanted to be a cricketer play for the country uh but having said that you know uh, cricket did not have ipl or did not have that and and you mentioned that you know you also played uh, with tendulkar and you bowled out kamli yes and then cricket did not have that much money as well right so i was i had to i was you know my parents always mentioned that you know cricket is not you know if you don't do well in cricket you know you have to have backup so as i said i was a keen uh, i used i was quite good in uh, studies as well so did my engineering it was tough to do both but cricket obviously was my uh, was the passion and uh, and then when i started playing ranji trophy my first ball in my ranji trophy career was to the living legend sachin tendulkar so that's how i started off they were in the same zone as we were uh, and so i started off like, uh, with them uh, with that match and uh, and i have i have had a reasonably good career i i think i played about only about 13 matches 
but every third match i have taken a five wicket haul so it is like a century right uh, in in a, in a in a fast you know in a in, in, as a bowler every five wicket haul is like a century so i i i remember is that my data is on cricket info every third match i took a five wicket haul uh, but i was a flat feet and that uh, led to me uh, uh, you know leading to stress fractures amongst all this by the way i also took i also got vinod kamli out for a duck uh at one kid uh, in one of our one of our other jumping matches again a very high point for me uh, but uh, as i said uh, being a fast bowler i had stress fractures uh, on my leg and that uh, three years in a row so that uh, you know uh, that made me decide uh, that you know whether i can continue like this or should i take an alternative career path uh, i had finished my engineering uh, and and uh, like others i could have easily gone to the us Uh, did my management or something like that and started working there but i always somehow i always had an entrepreneurial uh, instincts in me and i said i need to do something which is uh, uh, which can uh, which can satisfy me so you know uh, i got married and i and my wife understood my passion uh, she understood I, i mean i know that she married me for cricket which uh, which could which that i would be a national player but that didn't happen but then we had to kind of make do with uh, uh you know my entrepreneurial instincts i said let's i'll support you let's figure out a way what do you want to do and how do you want to do it but that was my growing up so at at what age you started your first venture and in which year we uh, so my our first venture was right after right out of college right so i think i was about uh, 25 26 years old and uh, and and that point of time uh, uh you know the internet service provider licenses had opened up in india meaning earlier it was all controlled by government so vsnl was the only one they opened it up and satyam info which is now called sifi they were the ones who had got a license for entire country and they wanted a joint venture partner in india uh, in baroda and we out of school uh, you know my wife and i thought that you know this is a uh, this is something which is exciting we, you know it's technology new cutting edge we should do something about it let's get so we also we also applied for uh, to become a partner with them sent them all the data uh, but we at the same time we knew that you know we are just right out of school just capital and uh, will not work here we will need to we will need to show them something uh, you know as to why they should trust us so both of us you know we worked very hard we figured out uh, you know we worked with about 1000 plus industries in india in baroda uh, got them to fill a question and say Uh, you know, if you are given a good ISP service, uh, would you subscribe? And if you, if yes, how many, how many people would subscribe to this? Like stuff like that. So got some data, followed up with them, and got the data back saying that okay, they, we, if, if given the service, we'll do that. Uh, and uh, and that led to so when we went and met them uh, to ask them or inquire about what happened to our application, they said you guys are out of school. You know, we need experienced people. why why should even be why should i or wish why should we even back you right uh, and uh, and then i showed them these 1000 uh, faxes which we had got from various uh, industrial customers and told them i can get you 20000 uh, subscribers uh, on the day of launch right uh, and and that took them by surprise and very pleasant surprise and i think uh, rest was history uh, i think uh, then we went ahead you know worked together Uh, we are we were the number one isp in the next in, in the next two years uh, built it out so i think uh, that was that was our uh, that was the first venture got it and and uh, uh, how did the exit happened in that venture so what had happened was that uh, satyam decided that uh, you know they wanted to uh, all the joint venture partner they wanted to kind of own the entire asset um, own the entire business back because they wanted to control everything uh, and stuff like that and uh, and they gave us a good uh, good option in terms of an exit and so we sold the entire thing back to them and uh, that's how our first uh, first so called exit happened in our career and that was reasonably early we were 28 29 years old and w- was it financially retirable that you didn't uh, had to re- work for the rest of your life with that money no that it wasn't the case uh, it was a good exit uh, you know you had to, you know you had nothing and from that we were i would say we had now uh, got uh, reasonably comfortable in terms of now we have this money we can start another venture or do something more you know so i think i don't think it was a retireable amount and, and uh, what led uh, to you know the germination of the second venture uh yeah yeah so that, so because we were in the isp phase in 99 2000 dot com boom and then the burst etc uh, what i realized was that uh, you know 
the convenience of doing online stuff or you know doing stuff you know convenience of whether banking online or doing transactions online is going to be the future and 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 that is where the world will definitely move toward because the convenience is so much that it trumps the and plus there is a cost advantage as well uh, and and being in the isp space realizing the power of internet etc uh, i thought if everybody is going to move there somebody needs to take care of the security as well right or uh, you know if everybody is going to build houses or online houses how are we going to make sure the houses are secure so i think that uh, led to me thinking about security and at that part of time india was just opening up in the technology space right and that and 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 so uh, my next venture was more on consulting side where uh, we were helping various uh, organizations in terms of their security posture in terms of processes uh, policies uh, you know uh, technology etc so it was more consulting uh, and i think uh, within 4 or 5 years we built out a good business we were I mean, we were the first one of the earlier consulting companies earlier consulting companies at at that point of time but uh, for me uh, consulting wasn't cutting it uh, you know i i was very keen that uh, you know we need to build something which is world class uh, and uh, it has to be a software uh, it needs to be in the space of security and it is to help uh, solve a customer's challenge and that i think within our consulting business i kind of carved out a new uh, new uh, division and uh, and worked with the work the worked on a product or launched our SaaS first so called SaaS security product which was helping uh, our customers in terms of protecting or uh, identifying malwares and uh, application weaknesses uh, you know and it was a continuous process and providing remediation guidelines and i think uh, guidance on our portal that's what the that's what the product we developed uh, we started off uh and i piggy backed on some of our consulting customers our consulting customers uh, you know we had and there were some some of the large ones so kind of worked on worked with them uh, shared our uh, our product uh, i think in the first six months i remember uh, my first large customer was icc bank in that in that part of time and they were always uh, you know very helpful trying to uh, encourage uh, new startups and i remember the the chief security officer i spoke to him and told him this is what i have and he said uh, you know these are the these are our requirements and if you can fulfill them uh, we will give it a try uh, i don't make any promises but uh, you have to you have to prove that it's working so i kind of i said whatever so i worked with them defined the product worked with them made it made it happen and i think after about 4 or 5 months of uh, using our product and getting satisfied that this is a company which is listens and will do whatever it takes uh they gave they gave they became my first customer and i think that from there on i it, it just took off uh and uh, and uh, ultimately in 2012 september uh we got an offer from uh, one of the large enterprise security product uh, uh, software companies uh trend micro and they they showed interest in acquiring us and that led to our second exit and i sold it to them and that was reasonably rewarding as well so uh, ashish uh, can you can, can you share the ballpark figure of the exit to trend micro i uh, you know i don't think uh, i would be comfortable in sharing the exit but it was a multi million dollar deal i mean i would like if that helps you know it was a reasonably reasonably rewarding as i said and uh, so so it was a reasonably large uh, exit i think more than the exit the two things which really stood out for us was uh, one uh, you know we uh, you know uh, security software is generally uh, considered to be good from countries like us or maybe israel and uh, you know uh, it was really a high point for us saying that there here is a security company Uh, which is uh, built with uh, the product is built in india conceptualized in india selling to the world and the largest enterprise security company buys it for you, buys it from it right so i think that was a very big high for us apart from the capital which we gained uh, and second is that it also gave us uh, it also as founders gave us a leg up saying that uh, you know we can build world class products out of india and uh, and, and i think uh, i think uh, before i did that not many people in the system would have given me uh, that much credit that you know uh, we can build a security software and that to saas based software out of it so well it's 2012 right now saas is a big boom but we did this in 2012 so you know, i think those were very high points for us and how old were you uh, when when this the second acquisition happened 2012 i was 41 years old like 13 years it took took you to build it such a scale 
Yeah, I think because as I said, uh, you know, after my first visit, we started a company where we did consulting. For five, six years, we did consulting and then we pivoted towards the product. So I think the product journey was about five, six years or maybe seven. And and you always bootstrapped your journey. Was there a specific reason for bootstrapping or is it that uh, you were never comfortable with VCs? I don't think uh, I had an option. Uh, and I want to be honest here. Uh, in my ISP business, I think we were bootstrapped and, and the business itself was paying, so we didn't need money. Uh, in the consulting business, again, we were generating, we were 35, 40% gross, uh, you know, making money. So we were fine there. On the product side of things, when I started raising money, there were so many questions. Did you scale it? Will you, we're building out of India. Do you know how to get quality? You don't know how we can do it. We don't, you know, we can do this and then we will invest. Do that and then we will invest. And then finally, during the, when, uh, when the exit, when I was, when I had an offer for exit, there was, Finally, a couple of uh, venture capitalists who were interested in us uh, and said, we will make an investment. We're okay, but you know what? We are making an investment. Why? We need this many things to be done. I am said, I'm done with so many things. I might as well pick the money on the table and establish myself. And with this kind of stamping, when I go next, they will definitely you know, value me. So so I in, our, in my second venture in a product venture, I don't think many people backed me or thought I would, and I don't blame them. It's just that it was a stage at which was, you know, but... Uh, uh, and then uh, in the current uh, current business, uh, you know, because we had uh, we had a reasonable success in terms of uh, our exit and ca- availability of capital. I wanted. I also realized that when you are building a software security product, it, you know, you have to do it right because it's the trust which uh, which uh, which which customers and and and, uh, and businesses put in you. So you have to do it right. And you know, and sometimes in the ND, this is not like pulling in a lot of money and marketing it and selling them substandard software and then figuring out things on the way. I wanted to do it right. And and we had the capital to back us up. So I think we built it. We make sure we had the right team. We got the right kind of customers. We put the right kind of quality in place. And once we were ready, we went out, in the, went out to the market and said, now we are ready to scale this and grow this business. And that is when we got our uh, got uh, Tata Capital to invest in us. So to uh, to so to long to long so so uh, uh, to cut the long story short, uh, first two instances bootstrap was by uh, was by design and not by choice. You know, not many people backed me in this uh, in this uh, version of our or in this uh, in on this in this company. It was by choice that we wanted to make sure we build it right and then get the right investor when we are ready to kind of scale up. And can you describe the journey after the second acquisition and what led you to starting uh, Industface? Uh, so as I said, you know, uh, the second when I sold the company to 10 Micro, uh, what we were doing is we were uh, we were finding out what are the weaknesses in our customers' applications, you know, in their websites or mobile apps, and reporting it to them. Uh, and when I used to meet a lot of my CIO and uh, chief security officer friends, uh, they would come and tell me that, uh, you know, it's great you are reporting all these things to us, but it takes us time for us to fix it. And now that you have reported, we knew, we now know that hackers can hack us anytime. So why don't you come up with a solution where uh, you not only report these weaknesses, but till the time we fix it, you help us uh, uh, keep, keep protect, uh, get, uh, help us get protected through them. So. I think we, I always had this in my mind and, uh, and I said, and once I did it, I don't think I wasted a single day the, on the next day of my acquisition after the money came in the bank. The second day itself, we were all this. We said that this is what it is and we are going to build this out. And you didn't have to compete uh, because, uh, you know, your second venture was also in security and the third venture. No, I think the, the non-compete was on that. We, uh, the detection piece, which was uh, the detection piece we could not, I could not build off my own because that is what I sold him. So what I did was I actually partnered with them and said, why don't I I'll use the same detection piece and you know I'll build the protection piece out, right? Uh, because customer detection piece continued to be that and I put the protection piece out. And I think now with over prior time, uh, you know, that non-compete got over and now the detection piece also we built it out again. So now we have the entire suite back. And can you describe the problem you solve uh, at Industries in, in layman's language and who are your customers and why do they use you? Sure. I think... Uh, uh, so predominantly anybody who has a digital business and when i say digital means anybody uses a website a mobile app or an api to inter- in, interact with their with their subscribers or their partners or their employees 
because these applications are available online on the internet apart from these this ecosystem the hackers also have an access to because this is open to the internet right so uh, the prob the simple problem statement is when your application is exposed on the internet the you want to make sure that you uh, whatever information whatever uh, software which is out there you are completely up to date uh, in terms of there are no loopholes or security patches within that or security loopholes which a hacker can exploit you need to continue to keep finding them because nowadays applications change very very quickly right for whatever reason so and when you change them you inherently add more vulnerabilities or weaknesses in the application which a hacker can exploit so one problem statement we want to continuously keep make sure they find out what is happening and while we report them we want uh, the customers wanted that we should get an immediate protection against that so that even if we have the vulnerabilities or weaknesses no hacker is able to exploit those weaknesses that's the second step uh, uh, second problem statement and uh, uh, what also what the customers realized was that uh, a lot of times these hackers or adversaries don't uh, might might not be able to access your vulnerabilities but they would uh, bombard your application with ddos or what attacks or put unwanted traffic on your application and bring the server down itself so you are not available right so that's the second aspect they were the, the, the customers are you know used to face when they have an application which is digitally uh, facing the internet third aspect was while we want security the performance of my uh, performance or end user experience should not go down right so it should be even though it is secure and security generally tends to Uh, you know deteriorated the the application performance a bit so all these were the problem statements and the other aspect was we as a business neither have the time nor the expertise to make sure that you know we are continuously monitoring this making sure all the things are tweaked managed for us and and make sure this ent- all this entire platform runs in a in a seamless manner and and uh, we achieve a single goal that our applications are or we are secured from hackers i mean there's a lot of stuff to needs to be done right so so earlier option was go to various vendors and do stuff and get somebody to look at it so what we realized was that if this is the problem statement we uh, let us build a platform which will detect continuously detect the security weaknesses we'll immediately patch it for them so that hackers don't exploit it we do a we continuously monitor these applications to see if somebody is trying to bring down the servers by uh, doing ddos or bot attacks and we had a we had a we had a cdn layer added on top of it so that the, the end user performance does not deteriorate right and all of this is fully managed with an sla so our company's mission is and what we tell our customers you go digital go uh, digital fearlessly while we'll make sure that we manage your security with a with an sla right so that part got really Uh, uh, really met all the cust- our customers aspirations right they wanted all of this to be done they needed it they wanted to make sure that it is done in a right manner somebody is monitoring it somebody is supporting it and uh, and with a with a with an sla right so i think that really uh, helped us and that is what is helping us achieve against our competitors uh, uh, and mind you this is the, the, what we are doing is not something very uh, very new it's like at least the web, web application firewall is around for a quite, uh, almost a decade but because the way we have uh, you know put together a platform understanding every requirement of our uh, customer to make sure that it is safeguarded that really sticks with our customer now we have look at any vertical i mean we have 3000 plus customers in 90 plus countries now uh, almost 35% of our customers are international customers and, and last year we just 20% so we are kind of clearly our, our business globally is really uh, working very well and any vertical uh, you know banks insurance companies mutual funds startups uh, fintech uh, media name it and we have it uh, so i think uh, i think this is clearly what is really stuck with them and is helping them and can you describe your journey in industry phase 2 1 million arr then 5 million arr and the current milestone in terms of arr where you are at like what it took to achieve that that numbers sure i think uh, as i said when we started this venture we had our own capital so i think the first uh, few years we spent in making sure the technology is right building the right stuff out making sure it's done well 
And then, like any startup, it took us some time to get to our first million ARR. The good news was because as entrepreneurs and founders, we were known, so it it kind of helped uh, that helped the cause. And and uniquely, uh, most of the SaaS companies which I see here, uh, see building out of India now, they kind of cater to an SMB through a digital model. Uh, and uh, acquire customers and then move up the ladder to go and uh, get enterprise customers. Like, unlike that, uh, we at Industries had a unique model. So we actually, our first customers, few customers, the large enterprise, whether they are banks or insurance companies. So we started off with them and they were extremely demanding, right? They were like, they want to make things, this is where we work. So we kept on uh, getting our product well. Uh, so we, our first, uh, uh, our model of, and, and that's why it took a little bit more time to get it scaled up. We actually moved to a digital uh, offering only about two and a half years back. Uh, you know, so uh, where uh, we reach out to our customers across the world through our online mechanism and a, and, and a typical, uh, you know, uh, digital product and marketing and inside sales model, right? And that has been, that has been a driver. So now, now that we have all these work and, and about for the last two years, we're also building out a partnership channel, right? So, and, and, and making sure that we have partners across. Uh, so we have quite a few partners in India, but uh, we just signed a very large uh, partnership with, uh, with, the, in, with the world's number one IT consulting company, TCS. So now they, as part of the managed security services offering for the protection side of application, they use our, uh, our product module at the back end. So, which is, so, all, so this has all led to our growth from one to five and now seven. And I think uh, as we hit the three and a half, four million, five million, uh, uh, you know, we got uh, we got an investor in. Now, now that we know that we have a sizable uh, ARR and we are on a growth path with all the social proof available in terms of customers, in terms of uh, analysts, in terms of product market fit, uh, we have started, uh, we raised uh, capitals. And uh, we are using that now to kind of get our ship uh, or sky, uh, make sure our ship is, uh, is off the ground and we are trying to get more and more uh, customers uh, as quickly as possible. I think that's, that's what the current uh, our journey is. <clears throat> and if you remember, right, in which year you would have hit the first 1 million RR and then 5? First two, two and a half years were more about building the product out. Uh, I think it took us uh, almost about a couple of years to get to the million dollar. And then I think the, 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 the now, uh, then the acceleration was uh, much faster and, and it has become even faster up the, after the investment. So I estimate like uh, around 2017 or 18, you would have the first one mil year around yeah. 2020, you would have 2021, you would have five and now it's the journey to. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the trajectory. It's an interesting question. I never thought about it. I'm kind of not, we've never kind of taken a step back and documented that. But yeah, you're right. And uh, and uh, right now, what are the the levers, partnerships, and other things that you are leveraging to make sure that you know you grow at fifty uh, percent year on year from here to let's say become a thirty million RR company? Uh, actually, uh, we are projecting doubling our revenue next year. So so. Just to just to start with that, it's not fifty percent. We actually feel, and there are quite a few trigger points. I think the number one trigger point is uh, we have the capital to infuse. So you know we have we have uh, you know we just raised capital only some time back. So now we have the money to kind of uh, make sure that we are able to reach out to as many customers as possible across the world. Uh, 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 the second other important development has been you know uh, Gartner has been a very big uh, influence in terms of uh, you know technology decision making, right? And Gartner has a program called Gartner Peer Insights, which is which is nothing else but it's a curated program where customers uh, uh, in our product category would go and independently provide an input in terms of Gartner to Gartner, saying that uh, what technology, what product they use, uh, and they have several parameters they look at and rate rate the company uh, on that perspective. Uh, and it is and it is the customer's report, right? So and 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 Gartner's, uh, Gartner comes up with a quadrant within that, and uh, the ones which are chosen are on the top right quadrant are, are considered to be customer's choice. Uh, so which essentially means you're the you're you're the leaders in that segment. From what we hear is that uh, as per the latest Gartner report, which is uh, which is scheduled to come out anytime soon, uh, 
uh, Indus Waste will is the customer's choice in almost all categories. Uh, Gartner is is uh, you know the report will come out to be, and uh, we are competing with the with the likes of uh, Akamai's and Cloudflare's of the world in that category. So it's pretty. It's pretty, it's 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 going to be very exciting, right? And it, it gives us the leg up across the world. And you know, with Gartner, uh, and Gartner is a very well respected analyst, and with their report saying, and this, and and it's more, it's it's going it, it's going to be more uh, effective because this is what the customers are saying, right? This is a customer's view. Now, no nobody else is better than a customer. You know, nobody can be better than a customer telling you what product they like. Uh, so I think that's going to be another very huge. Uh, opportunity for us to kind of uh, help us scale much faster globally. Uh, another TCS is a very large partner we just cracked. Uh, so that should give us, and they only go after the Fortune 1000, 2000 customers. So uh, that should give us, uh, that all these things, all these things put together and we look, we are really excited about uh, the uh, our future. That's really awesome. So now you are able to do things which, which can scale you much faster uh, rather than closing each customer one by one. Exactly, and and now we have the ingredients. Like we have the capital. We have got analysts telling us that we are great. Uh, we have got customers. We have humongous amount of customers now. And fourth, we have we have a we have a partnership to piggyback on to go after the, some of the larger brands and customers across the world. So and and of course we continue to do a lot many more things. But this is something what is, uh, you know, we are getting into the next year with this. So it's very exciting. Ashish, what have been the the challenges in building Interspace, and how have they been different in from your previous ventures? But uh, frankly, the challenges in on uh, for this uh, for uh, at Indus Space, uh, of course, there have been challenges, but they have not been as as lethal or as uh, pronounced, which they were when we were in the starting up mode, right? the my first venture or the second venture, when you were trying, when sustenance itself was a big question mark, right? Unlike that, this was a little bit, I would say, reasonably a better uh, a better opportunity. But uh, I think. Uh, as I said, that we were getting into a space which was not new, where there were established players. Uh, there was there was always a lingering thought that would we be able to differentiate and get customers to buy us instead of them uh, was definitely one of the biggest challenges. I think we were as a company, uh, as founders, as a team, we were always uh, grappling with. But uh, but we always knew that uh, you know if we have the right kind of uh, software and the service uh, combination which addresses the customer's business challenge will definitely we should definitely do well so it took us some time uh, but uh, i think our uh, our uh, belief uh, in in what we were doing has uh, now on the in the hindsight we can say has paid off and we are doing a great job and gartner putting us in as a voice of customer in all their categories is definitely a a uh, great testimonial of what we had thought was a challenge and how we overcome it. And uh, in in your second journey, if you can just share the specific of like uh, how did the acquisition happen with Trend Micro? Is it that you approached Trend Micro or is it Trend Micro found you through, through some eye banker? Uh, eye banker and all those things were very far off from us. Was nobody was ready to put money in me. So uh, you know. Uh, we, I had uh, friends and, and I used to go to a, this show called RSA. It's an RSA, RSA very large security show which happens in uh, in uh, in California every year. And uh, I used to generally go there more there, more so to learn what are the new technologies coming in, what are what is the industry moving towards. And, in, and being there for several years, I had made some reasonably good friends there as well. In, and they were running various large security companies. And in one of those discussions, you know, I was chatting with uh, one of the trend micro executives in terms of telling him what I'm doing and what I'm planning to do and stuff like that. And 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 he said, hey, uh, you know, we are really building out our application security stack, uh, and this is something which might be of interest. Would you be open to kind of uh, discussing that? And I said, uh, why not? Let's. Uh, I haven't thought about it, but uh, you know, if there is. Uh, if there is uh, enough, and uh, you know, if there is something which we can worthwhile, which can help both of us, uh, I would be happy to look at. So that's how the conversation progressed. Uh, we actually didn't even have a second suit, or we didn't even make a second second effect. I think it was everything worked out quite well, but we didn't have any investment banker. And in how many uh, months from the the first meeting did the acquisition close? Till like the money hit your bank? Yeah, it took. 
a little bit longer uh, predominantly because one uh, for me, for uh, us it was everything was very new we had no idea about how an acquisition happens so and and it was like unfurling a lot of the uh, you know peels of orange you know peeling the orange uh, oranges was the was was the feeling we were getting you know one first they wanted to test our code as to how accurate our code is stuff like that they wanted to do our business diligence uh, technology diligence uh, legal diligence taxation uh, you know the, the the diligence itself was overwhelming for us we had never done all this and a lot of things were not even aligned right because we were not uh, you know we didn't know how it works out uh, so that's why it took a little bit longer uh, and and especially uh, you know we also learned a lot of things on the way we had we were not experts not 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 did we have anybody to advise us right to so kind of it was me and our team and then our legal and financial advisor to uh, help us get over the process and uh, uh, and but at the same time they were very nice people right so they kind of they worked out very well and they understood where we are coming from uh, and uh, i think one of the things which helped also was that they knew that uh, they are dealing with a company which is honest which doesn't uh, doesn't have you know uh, wheels uh, in wheels or they are not have any other stuff going on so i think that really helped in some of the areas where we didn't have enough information or the it, it helped us push it just because they thought that these guys are honest and they know what they are doing right so uh, but it was i, I think from a process was saying i think that they we signed the nda to the closing i think it must be maybe 3 months or 3 to 4 months i i don't actually remember the exact time again something which i have never thought about but yeah it was a, it was a it was an overwhelming process for uh, us and personally myself it uh, it drained me out it did because especially when you're not now now i'm kind of now that i've done that no things you know it's, it's now much more easier and know what they really look for uh, but uh, it was a uh, it was quite a process and uh, uh... your wife has been your co-founder your partner in all of your ventures right you both have been professionally co-founders for la- more than last 20 years how difficult or easy it is to have your spouse as your co-founder i think both of us had a rule was very which was very clear and we follow it even uh, we follow that even today uh, none of us discuss business at home uh, especially with our kids around or whatever it's hardly we would talk about business and that's a rule because that can get sanity in our house uh, the number two rule is that i am the ceo of the company so in office i am the boss and not she and uh, and at home she is the boss and not me, not me i think these three simple formulas we continue to follow having said that she's an extremely bright uh, you know it's an extremely bright uh, uh, individual uh, you know she has uh, its uh, I, i hate it when people kind of tag her with saying that she's my wife and give her credit i don't think so i think she has been she's exceptionally bright she has done whatever functions she has been told to take up she has done very well for example now she is our cpo chief people officer uh, and a co-founder uh, she is doing phenomenally well we have been uh, we just got a uh, uh, you know, great place for a great place to work certified uh, two times in a row and uh, from what i know is we have got exceptional score so let's see uh we might be even one of the award contenders we'll see what happens but 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 that's the that's the role she plays and clearly uh, with the third party validation like great place to work uh, talks uh, highly of her capabilities and uh, it's not a mom and pop shop it's it's absolutely it's absolutely professional in terms of our dealing with between between ourselves and with our employees and our team uh, ashish you have a very unique journey has none uh, seen none you know as 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 unique as yours you were a ranji cricketer you know aspiring to play for nationals and you have come so far as an entrepreneur if you reflect back on your journey how does it feel like a roller coaster uh, it has been a it has been a roller coaster to say the least you know it's been fun uh, i think i have no regrets in my life i think i have i have i have enjoyed every aspect of my life uh, i think cricket were playing cricket and you know aspiration and putting in that hard work to play for the country was as exciting and as fun and you know i did it with all the diligence and uh, sincerity uh, when i realized that i can't make it uh, you know i got into an onto i started become I started my uh, 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 started to explore my entrepreneurial aspirations i've been happy i've been lucky 
uh, god has been kind that you know every venture has not only taught me it has given me uh, they have been reasonably successful as well in in their own capacities uh, so i think uh, it's been a uh, and and there have been ups and downs but uh, i still look forward to getting up and coming to my office there is not a single day when i don't look up to uh, look forward to going to office uh, you know when there could be days of stress but i i think i just love i just love what i do and i think as long as i'm enjoying it uh, uh it, 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 i think we are we are we are we are doing well i am doing well i need to have that you know i i personally feel that unless you have that you know that zeal and enthusiasm to and an excitement of what you're doing uh, you know you'll never 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 do it well so i think i am extremely happy god has been kind the ride has been a kind of a roller coaster but uh, i have no complaints i think i am i'm very lucky uh, to be where i am and i believe your drive would have played a played a very key role in your entrepreneurship journey because initially the drive was to play for the country and when because of you know health reasons it it couldn't materialize that all drive you channeled into entrepreneurship absolutely i don't share this much often but uh, I, you know being a cricketer who was reasonably good i wanted to play for the country and that's like the that's like the thing for any cricketer he would aspire to i have a similar aspiration that uh, in a, in whatever we do on in, for example at industries we want to build a world class product which is recognized uh, respected kicking ass so i think uh, in some way uh, the garter validation is going to be uh, a step towards that uh, aspiration and we have much more to do and uh, you know and i think uh, the other thing i would love to what i always aspire to is uh, is you know help uh, from whatever little experience i have especially in the cyber security space and the and, and the technology space help and guide and motivate some of the other uh, entrepreneurs to uh, you know have the aspiration be at it and uh, you know we can do it i mean we are not just another services uh, country we can produce world class products and uh, you were initially not a technologist so so how did you kept on learning so much that ultimately you are being building one of the top technology ventures from the country it it must have been a very very sharp learning curve for your for you i am an i am an electrical engineer and did my management from i am but i have never uh, i am i have never claimed claimed and never will claim that i am a technologist i or i understand technology very well i've never kind of really done anything on that front but i think i had a very good under, i feel that i have a good understanding of the customers problems or customers problem statement in terms in any business i went into and 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 try to work uh, backward in terms of how do i if that is the problem statement how do we make sure that we accurately deliver and solve the customer challenge and for that what all is required so again i have been very fortunate uh, you know i have had a very uh, i have had great uh, co-founders city of co-founders i had one uh, uh, the one when i had attend micro uh, uh, you know acquisition uh, uh, and now i have i you know we have uh, we have venki who is my co-founder he again he joined me as a cto and and he brought in the technology technology progress and being having built so many uh, software products uh, based out of us coming in here so uh, i have always uh, you know relied on uh, and had been very lucky to have great co-founders now that we have a great now that we are successful we have a very big team right our, our we have now we have we have capabilities in every area so but uh, yes i have always leaned on uh, technology uh, co-founders and i have been very lucky to have some awesome ones uh, to work with and ashish if if you have to reflect b- back and what are the three to five lessons that entrepreneurs can learn from your journey so okay i think i have a lesson in every venture of mine when i was playing cricket i think uh, uh, you know one of the things we learned was that we learned the team you know that's a team game and second is never get overawed by your opponents right so for example we used to play baroda was a, a smaller team and mumbai was the de facto almost the entire indian team right uh, and uh, we used to face them every year uh, and whenever we used to face them you know it it was over, over you know this overpowering right team 
but i think what what i learned was that we beat them twice in my stint you know in, in when i was playing for baroda and it was all because of you know that we we kind of we kind of made sure that we went through the process did the right stuff and got so i think that made me realize that it is no nothing can be overpowering if you have the will and the and and the and the grit and the determination to do it so i think that's the first learning i got and i have kind of i use that always in my every venture i don't get overawed by uh, you know competition or customers or even uh, even government officials right i mean that's not something or anything which is overpowering i think that was my first learning uh, from my uh, from the first venture to see i realized uh, uh, my learning was that you have to envisage that if you are entering into uh, into an uh, if you are becoming an entrepreneur you are doing a business you need to envisage what will it take for you to become successful and and how do you kind of how do you kind of work towards it and uh, in a very diligent manner like for example convincing satyam to invest in us or become partners was a was a learning that, that wouldn't have happened if we were not envisaging that they will not hire us or they will not partner with us if we don't have enough to show them that how because at the end of this satyam was looking for a partner who can sell for them right or who can make sure that the region he understands the region and helps them do that so i think envisaging and working on those aspects or working on on what is what it takes to become successful and what is the requirement was the second learning the trend micro uh, exit uh, my learning was that i was on a crossroad to decide whether scale that company up further or uh, or or sell and and trust me i did not the selling was not just for uh for monetary reasons it was also because you know it was also because i already knew what i need to what, what i what we want to do next and uh, uh and as i said no vc was able to back me uh i had a consultant company or a consulting company or services company by, uh, made out of india or built out of india tag uh, you know whether we can be in the world class security company or not all these things were you know lingering on and and i thought that uh, i had to i was i had to take a call which was uh, which could help me build the next one and i think on the in the hindsight i think it was a great call uh, because the trend micro deal not only gave me capital but it eliminated all the questions anybody would have had in terms of whether we can build a security product we know stuff do we know scalability do can we build world class so i think that's the third learning and in this and in this business i think uh, So I think it's been going great, but I think uh, a couple of years, uh, two and a half years back, we realized that being bootstrapped is not going to really help us grow. We need now to get into mold of, uh, you know, acceleration, and we need the right partner. Uh, make sure we have the right partner who can guide us, who has the right kind of capabilities apart from uh, providing money. So we went and partnered with. Uh, we're fortunate, you know, Tata is a very trusted brand, and you know, they are we are up, we are their partner. They have invested in us. uh but the learning here was that we needed to take the money and not hold on to our equity and say oh you know uh, uh, we needed money to kind of we needed money to grow faster and 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 and, and we realized that the time is time is of essence, essence so we need to make sure that we have the right stuff i think these are some of the learnings i would uh, i would love i i, I which i have learned and which have i which have helped me i hope they can help your listeners and viewers as well thank you so much ashish has been fantastic to walk in your shoes uh, you know imagine your journey through this conversation i hope uh, my listeners and entrepreneurs listening to this podcast uh, enjoy and learn from it as much as i did during this conversation superb thank you so much